and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of Christ my Savior. Good evening. Tonight I'd like to start in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1. I always feel like the Gospel according to St. John describes Jesus very, very, very well. It says, In the beginning was a Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehend it not. When we look at the world today and we talk about Jesus, so many people are in the dark and it's so sad. And so many claim, people claim to be in the light, but they're in total darkness. You will find in the, the book of Psalms 103, another thing as a Christian, we should really write, read, study out, and obey. We're told, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who, remedy, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfy thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plentiness in mercy. He will not always tie, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our fame, he remembers that we are dust, as for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field. So he flourished, for the wind passes over, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. To such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that exceed in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, all my soul. Most people, most Christians, will agree that the Bible is the inspired written word of God. Most Christians can agree that the Bible, the written word of God, is given to us by Jesus Christ. And it is there so that we can find that way, that pathway to heaven. Most of Christians understand that the Bible really is at the instruction book. Jesus paid a price. He paid a heavy price so that we could have the written instructions on how to find heaven. You know, the Bible, again, is simply basic instructions before leaving earth. Think of the words we just read. You know, we need to have that understanding. We need to be like this. We need to bless the Lord, O oh, my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. When we bless the Lord, when we praise the Lord, when we admire the Lord, when we honor the Lord, when we pray tribute to the Lord, even when we are serving the Lord our God, 
We are to do it with the best part of ourselves. We are to do it with our whole being, our whole might. We are to do it with our soul. And we know that our soul comes immediately from God. And our soul is what returns to God. Our soul is immaterial. It's immortal. And our soul is worth more than anything this earth has to offer. God gave unto us his best when he gave us Jesus. Think about that. God gave us his only begotten son as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. Now the servant of God, we have to serve God with the best we have. As the best we have in our substance. With the best of our person. We need to serve the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul. And we serve the Lord our God through Jesus Christ, 24-7. The Gospel account is written by St. John. In John chapter 4, Jesus tells us, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Spirit and in truth is how one worships God. In order to worship God in the spirit, one has to have the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. So it stands to reason, unless the spirit or the soul of man is engaged in the service of God, it is a benefit for him to worship God, for without the blood of Jesus, you have not the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the blood of Jesus, not only do you not have the Holy Ghost, you don't have the truth to worship in when you're worshiping God. When you are praying, when you are singing unto the Lord, when you assemble together on the first day of each and every week, when you partake in the Lord's Supper each and every week, every first day of the week, when you come together for Bible study, this is all done with your very best efforts. And we need to be thankful for the opportunities that we're able to do this. We need to be joyful that Jesus, Jesus paid the price so that we can worship the Lord our God with our very best. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Think of all the benefits you receive because you chose to become one of God's children, one of God's people. When you chose to come up out of that watery grave, a new creature in Christ, when you have the blood of Jesus, you have these benefits. Now, remember these benefits. And think about these benefits. Thank God for these benefits. Because we know that without Jesus, we are not worthy to receive any benefits at all. But because of the grace of God, because of what Jesus did for us, we have these benefits. You know, when you think about, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, you know, the benefits that we are talking about are not benefits that come from men. They come from God. And that's what we need to think about. The mercy of God. The number of benefits, the number of blessings we have because we chose to follow Jesus, to walk with Jesus, to be one of God's children, you can't count. Every morning, all throughout the day, you cannot count all the benefits you have because you chose to walk with Jesus. We see all these examples in the Bible the Israeli sang praises unto the Lord, and then they would forget his works. The Lord, knowing this weakness of his people, tells us, tells us, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We don't want to be like the children of Israel where we see something one day and we forget it the next day. We need to study so that we understand what we have by studying. By praying, God through the Comforter, through the Holy Ghost, will bring things, all things, to remembrance. All the things God has done for you, all the concerns and the well-being that the Lord has for us. <clears throat> when you study and pray and truly understand the concern God has for you, God has the concern for you because he is your father, your spiritual father in heaven. Then your gratitude, 
Your thankfulness for God for sending Jesus here to save you from death and destructions will help encouragement, give you encouragement and help you in the strength of your faith and the hope you have in Jesus. Amen. Wise words of wisdom to ponder. We find in the Gospel account of St. Matthew chapter 16, 26. It says, For what is a man's profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You need to walk with Jesus in your everyday life. Every day, everything you do, walk with Jesus. Jesus has laid out the pathway that leadeth unto heaven. And when you come up out of that watery grave, you were taken off that highway to hell and put on that pathway to heaven. We find it written where Enoch walked with God. Noah walked with God. Abraham walked with God. Isaiah, Joseph, Moses, David, Samuel are many examples we see in the Bible of men who walked with God. We find it written in the book of Leviticus 26, in verse 3. The Lord says, If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due seasons, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. We also find this warning in Leviticus 26, 14. But if you will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, and if you shall despise my statutes, or if you soul uphold my judgment, so that you will not do my commandments, but that you break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and a burning ang that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee with none persu persuade you. And if ye will not yet fulfill this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. We also find in Leviticus 26, 12, where God said to all who would trust him, obey him and walk with him that I will walk among you and will be your God and you shall be my people. That's what we want. We want him to be our God. We want to be his people. Amen. Amen. Now people say, oh, this is Old Testament. And it's true. But as a Christian, we are to walk with Jesus. And when we walk with Jesus, we're walking with God. Amen. Did not Jesus walk with God? Did not Jesus come to this earth to show us how we are to live our life? Are we not to be disciples of Jesus and to follow in Jesus' footsteps? So should I not be walking with Jesus, which in turn means I'm walking with God? We find it written, He that saith he knoweth him all himself, also to walk, even as he walked. And that is in the New Testament, for it is in 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. Listen. He that saith he knoweth him, in other words, if he knoweth Jesus, means you knoweth, E-T-H, ought also to walk even as he walked. Walking with Jesus can be a very interesting and profitable experience. We find it written, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. We find that in Genesis 5.24. We also find it written in Hebrews, in the New Testament about this. In Hebrews 11.5, it tells us, By faith Enoch was translated, that he should not see death and was not found, because God has translated him. For before his translation, he had the, this testimony that he pleased God. Let's think about that. If you walk with God like Enoch, the day will come when he will translate you at the resurrection and you will walk right through those pearly gates into heaven. The song says when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus we will sing and shout the victory. 
Amen? Amen? The Bible tells us that Noah was a just man. He was perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. When you study out Genesis, you could you come to the conclusion this was really very profitable for Noah. Really very profitable. Because by walking with God, God rewarded Noah. He basically gave him and his family an all-paid cruise while the rest of the world stayed home and drowned. I mean, think about that. That's really what happened. Noah, because he trusted in God, he walked with God, he obeyed God, saved him and his household. But to me, one of the most thrilling examples that's really wild to me of those who walk with God is a case of Shadrach, Massacre, and Abednego as we find in Daniel 3. These three men refused to bow down and worship a little small g God that Nebuchadnezzar had made. Think about that. Nebuchadnezzar this king of Babylon constructed an idol made of gold nine feet high nine feet wide and everybody was bowing down and these lads said nah nah and here's what they told him in Daniel 3 16 Shadrach Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king O Nebuchadnezzar we are not careful to answer thee in this manner. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. We read that they refused to bow down to a strange God because they would not worship a false God, a false idol, even though a king ordered them to do it. So the king had them bound and cast in the midst of a burning furnace. But when the king looked into the furnace, he said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like unto the Son of God. Walking with Jesus. Saved them. Today, walking with Jesus, you will also be delivered from the fire. Like Sadrach, Mesca, and Abednego. You won't bow, you won't bend, and you won't burn. Don't bow down to strange gods. Don't bow down to strange idols. Don't bow down to men. Have the blood of Jesus, and you will be protected. It's also appropriate for you to notice that in the gospel account as recorded by St. Matthew chapter 4, Peter received an invitation from Jesus to walk on water. We know that Jesus was walking on the water when Peter said unto Jesus, Lord, if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water. And Jesus said, come. Jesus told Peter to come, walk with him. Peter went down from the boat. Peter saw him walking on the water, took a few steps. But then what happened? Peter got scared. He sank. We find it written in the Gospel account of St. Matthew 14, 29. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind buster, he was afraid and began to sink. Jesus invites us to walk with him. That's what it's all about. Now you may not walk on the water as Peter did, but we need to learn to walk with Jesus on the dry land. And if we have enough traction walking on this dry land, we may not fall into a sinkhole. Walking with Jesus keeps us out of the pitfalls of life. The Bible warns us in Ephesians chapter 5, 15, See then, that, see then that ye walk circumcisely, not as fools, but as wise. In other words, watch your step. Be vigilant. That's why we walk with Jesus. He keeps us out of the pitfalls of this world. 
The Bible warns us. The Bible warns you in Revelation 16, 15. Blessed is he that keepeth his garment, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. Wow. Keeping your garments means keeping everything covered up that you ought not be showing. It appears that many are very proud and want to show the world various parts of their anatomy that ought to be covered up. That's why we need to take a look at your clothes. Would you wear that walking with Jesus? Remember, Jesus said, Behold, I come as a thief. Then there is a sad account about walking with Jesus. We also find this in the gospel account as told to us by St. John in chapter 6. And many of Jesus' disciples went back and walked with him no more. Jesus was preaching to them, explaining to them what they must do in order to please God the Father. Jesus was explaining to them how to walk the walk and who he was. And they could not believe this. They could not believe this to be a truth. They lacked, they lacked the belief in the words of Jesus. Jesus was telling it to them themselves. We get it from Jesus when we study the Bible. They had it straight from Jesus' mouth right there. So when people say, oh, if Jesus came down and talked to me, I would believe him. Well, when you study this out, another place, most left Jesus. So maybe you would be one of them would leave. We find it written that many that day started murmuring among themselves. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. People are no different today. They don't want to hear the word of God. They don't want to live the word of God. They want to, don't want to do what the Lord says, but they want the reward. We find it written as well that Jesus asked the twelve if they were leaving too. Simon Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Think about that. <clears throat> Today, we still have problems when people come up out of a watery grave and they decide they don't want to do everything that they should be doing. They don't want to follow all the commands of Jesus. They say it's too hard to live this life. They don't realize that this world is not my home. I'm only passing through. You know, this world's no one's home, folks. No one's. We're all passing through. It is good to study out disciples that left Jesus so we don't fall in that same pitfall. Today we have the complete written word of God. Think about that. We know from studying out this Bible that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Christ. And that Jesus came to this world for one reason. To show us the way home. That is why we need to study to show thyself approved. That's why we need to walk with Jesus, not with man. Jesus warns you in the gospel message is recorded by St. Matthew chapter 7 verse 13. And again, this is something that goes against 90% of, of the denominational teaching. He says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Most preachers say all are going to heaven and a few are going to hell. Nowhere is that written in the Bible. The reason it is important to walk with Jesus. The reason it's important to walk with Jesus is Jesus loves you and wants you to find your way to heaven. The pathway to heaven is full of tracks and detours and it you could very easily get sidetracked 
And if you get sidetracked, it will be very detrimental to your soul. Walking always with Jesus, you will then avoid these things. But if you take your eyes off Jesus, you'll be just like Peter, and you'll start to sink. That's why we need to study to show ourselves approved. That's why we need to pray daily. We need to study daily. We need to stay as close to Jesus as we can and hold on. Amen. Peter tells us, 1 Peter chapter 5, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Just like what happened in this world when a sheep or a deer get separated from the herd. The lions, the wolves attack them and they devour them and they are lost. We must be as children. We must be as children and let Jesus lead us to heaven. Who knows the way to heaven better than Jesus? As the song says, He leadeth me, O blessed thou, Oh, words with heavy comfort fall. Whatever I do, wherever I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. Let Jesus do the leading. Let Jesus do the leading. Jesus came from heaven. Jesus knows the way to heaven better than anyone. Amen. And that's why he gave us this book. That's why we have these instructions. Because he gave us instructions to heaven. After studying the Bible, you will understand there's no hiding place anywhere on this earth from God. You see that even Jonah found out you cannot hide from God. Jonah went into the great depths, the oceans, but God knew where he was. Jonah was down in the belly of a big fish in the bottom of the ocean, in the great depths of the ocean. But God saw him. God heard him. As a Christian, as servants of Jesus, we do not need to be like the people of this world. We do not need to be loving the worldly things more than we love Jesus. The world would rather please the flesh than the spirit and are guilty of worshiping the creation more than the creator. You want to know what's wrong with most people in the United States of America? They worship the creation, not the creator. In the time of Enoch, people seem to be more in the worshiping the creation over the creator. But as you see it written, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. You walk with Jesus because you love the creator. We walk with Jesus because we love the Creator above all things, above all the creation of the world. We know that the Creator is what we truly love. <clears throat> when you come to Jesus and you trust and obey, it matters not your earthly age because you become a babe in Christ. Christ Jesus in the Bible is clear. That as a babe in Christ, we are to be likened unto a newborn babe. As it is written, as newborn babes, he's us and seal the milk of the word that you may grow thereby. We need to study the word. That's what makes us strong. That's what makes us strong is the milk of the word. Amen. Many do not want to be thought of as a child. One of the problems. Many new Christians think it's silly to be treated as a child. But we have to learn to walk with Jesus. Just as a child has to learn to walk. A new Christian he needs to learn how to walk in the ways of the Lord. We are fed by Jesus through the Word of God and the Holy Ghost. Then the Holy Ghost is what helps us grow as well as helps us to learn with the Word of God. It's not about you. It's not about anything man has done or it's not about any man it's about Jesus and the gospel message and you are not to get puffed up thinking you're something when you're not there's some there are some major differences between a child in the nat natural world today and being a child a spiritual child 
When you think about this, we know that parents want their children to grow up. They want them gone. They want them to learn to take care of themselves. So we are taught teaching a child from little age up to take care of theirself. But in contrast, God's goal for you is very different. He's your eternal father. He is always available to you. Instead of wanting you to become increasingly independent, he wants you to learn to be more increasingly dependent on him. He wants you to walk with him. He wants your hand in his hand. He doesn't want you taken off on your own with your own two feet. He wants you to hold his hand. One of the hardest lessons as a human being we have to learn. It's like when you're walking with a two-year-old. What do they want to do? They want to let go. They want you to let go. They want to run. They want to take off and run them. It doesn't matter if it's a busy street or what. They want to be on their own. You try to point out to them all the beautiful things and all the stuff and scenery, but that isn't what they want, man. They want to be gone. They want to run because they're a big boy now. They're a big girl now. But as a Christian, many times that's a problem we have. We do not wait for Jesus. We want to run in front of Jesus. We need to learn to walk with Jesus. We need to stay with Jesus. We need to hold hands with Jesus. We do not need to be running out in the traffic because that's what happens when you let go of Jesus. You're running into the world without him. And sometimes we fall down when we get ahead of Jesus. And we hurt ourselves. And we get discouraged. And you'll look to God and say, Father, what is that all about? Why did you do this to me? You know I love you, and I don't want to disappoint you. How could you let this happen to me? And God the Father in heaven will look at you sadly and say, Child, you let go of my hand. You took off on your own. I'm able to keep you from falling when you keep your hand in mine. It is written, now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. It's found in Psalm 20, verse 6 and 7. All too often, we, you, me, we want to run ahead of the Lord. All too often, for some reason, we'll decide we know better than God what is, than what we read and written. We think we can do this without God. But that's why Isaiah 59 is so important. I try to read it at least once a week. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, your tongue had muttered perverseness. None calls for justice, nor any pleas for truth. They trust in vanity and speaketh lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Jesus is here for you, but you have to be there for him, for him to help you. You have to submit yourself unto the Lord. See, that's the key. We have to submit ourselves unto the Lord. We can't just, oh, I love the Lord, and not follow his commandments. We need to learn not to worry so much about the flesh, but worship the Lord our God in spirit and truth. Amen. Our iniquities. My iniquities separate me from the Lord Jesus. Your iniquities will separate you from the Lord Jesus. And if we allow it to continue, we will no longer be walking with Jesus. We'll lose our way. Off that straight and narrow path and be right back on that broad highway to hell. It is written, therefore, being justified by faith, we have the peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Think about that. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And somebody say you don't need Jesus to have a great relationship with God, but the Bible's clear, the instruction book is clear in Romans 5, that we have to be with Jesus. 
We walk with Jesus, not away from Jesus. So many we read about in the Bible walked away from Jesus, and it did not work out well for them. That's why we need to stay with Jesus, so we don't get stuck in places of temptation. And we need to make sure that we keep Jesus with us always, you know, as our defense. Turn with me as we wind down here to 1 John uh, chapter 1. And understand, this is written for you today. It's written for me. It's written for everybody, every Christian. It is for the Christian. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 4, And these things write, We unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But we walk in the light. As he is the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us all from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Wow. Christians, we need to look and make sure that we are in the light and not in the darkness. The devil will make you think you're in the light, but he's got you in total darkness. You know not what it is before you go through this life. We don't know what's going to happen as we're going through this life. We don't know how long we're going to be on this earth. But we need to make sure that we are walking with Jesus the whole time we're here, 24-7. Our hearts need to be full of the faith in Jesus Christ. Get yourself into a routine of talking with Jesus when you're alone. When you're walking, when you get a chance... Driving down the road, now don't get yourself where you take your eyes off the road, but think about things. You know, what you're running through your mind is what's going to be in your heart, what's going to help you. Let your heart be continually uplifted in solid petition and prayer for help, for strength, for knowledge. Let every breath be a prayer unto God. Brother Jude reminds us why we need Jesus. At all times, he proclaims, not unto him, that's Jesus, that is able to keep you from falling, that is Jesus, and to prevent your fallness before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, that would be Jesus, to the, to the only wise God, our Savior, that would be Jesus, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Amen. Walk with Jesus. Walk in the light of Jesus. Hold on tight to Jesus. Never, ever let go. Nothing on this earth, nothing on this earth is worth losing Jesus over. Nothing on this earth is worth losing Jesus over. For Jesus is truly the answer to all life's problems. It is written, Now the God of peace that brought you again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Peace with God will only come through Jesus Christ. Jesus came to this earth so that he could walk with you and bring you home. Think about that. Jesus is offering you an inheritance. His inheritance. He will share it with you. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Can you think about those words? When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. So now let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. There is only one shepherd, and that shepherd is Jesus. 
following any other, following any other way, will lead you to death and destruction. Jesus is life, and the life is the light of men. And Jesus, as the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. Be in the light of Jesus. To be in the light of Jesus, one has to have the blood of Jesus covering them. So many today will say that's not important, but it is important today as it was on the day of Pentecost, as it was when Jesus spoke of it in the Gospel account of John chapter 3, that one must be born again. All who have the blood of Jesus are in the light. All who have not the blood of Jesus are in the dark, and are full of the ungodliness and unrighteousness. They have fallen away. Those who have fallen away from the word of God are now in darkness and are full of ungodliness and unrighteousness as well. It is sad. It is sad. Today it is so simple, so easy. Today if you're not a Christian, accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Repent. Be baptized. Be immersed for the remission of your sin. Get the blood of Jesus so you can be one of Jesus' sheep one of God's children. Jesus will give to you, make sure you have the gift of the Holy Ghost. And the gift of the Holy Ghost to comfort you and guide you through this life, to keep you on that straight and narrow path. Jesus said you must be baptized to be saved. But man says, now nah, you don't. Jesus went to the cross. He made an agreement with God. He sealed the deal. What did man do for you that tells you you don't have to? Jesus is calling to you. Are you listening? Today is a great day for you to get with Jesus and become his friend. For Jesus is a friend to all. Amen? Amen. This week, let us learn to walk with the Lord Jesus like Enoch walked with God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Remember, God tells us in Romans 1 something that we should really think about. Romans 1.18 The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. What is holding you back from being with Jesus? What is holding you back from being a friend of Jesus and walking with Jesus?